The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Previously on The Ben Heck Show. Combining my brain with Felix is just grossly irresponsible. I think it would be grossly amazing. You never know until you try. You'll be perfectly fine. I have to admit I was pretty angry about the whole idea, mainly because it had nothing to do with electronics. I mean, brain surgery would be a completely different ball game for TPHS, and therefore it should be a completely different show. I still see no reason why we can't continue with the Felix Max Brain Transfusion Project. We can create the ultimate employee, Femax, the future of filming and soldering enforcement. It's a no-brainer if you think about it. Besides, asking if Ben Heck can perform brain surgery? That's like asking if Keanu Reeves can cook a good meatloaf. You just assume that he can. I don't know. I should probably stop talking to myself and actually get back to work on the actual electronics project that we started. Game Brains. Hey Max, all right, no surgery for now. We'll work on Game Brains. Let's get started. Amazing Hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspire Designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bad damn hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to continue working on the Game Brains project, which is a project to combine several Z80 compatible systems together. In the previous episode, we created the Z80 core along with the ROM and the RAM and connected it to a Sega Master System motherboard through the expansion port to see if it still worked. In today's episode, we're going to take it a few steps further. We're going to remove the video processor from the master system, put it on its own board, and connect it to this and see if it's backwards compatible with the ColecoVision. We'll also create a custom memory mapping solution so the system can automatically decide what system it's booting as. Let's get started. Now we need to think about memory mapping on the Z80. The Sega Master System and the ColecoVision, they have one thing in common, the BIOS is in the same place. So, you know, we'll work on that when we get there. We're gonna use a three to one multiplexer to decode the address going to the Sega Master System parts. A three to one multiplexer takes three bits in and gives you eight outputs. So if you send in this number, 000, this output will be active low while the rest are high. If you send in all ones, this will be low while the rest are high. What we can do in this case is if we see this pattern or this pattern, that means the system is trying to look at the RAM, and then we'll have these two outputs activate the RAM. If it's looking at this, that means it's trying to activate the BIOS, and then we'll have this activate the BIOS. If neither of those conditions are true, then we'll allow the cart to run. All right, let's see how the BIOS is enabled. So memory request has to be low, which means Z80 is trying to look at its bus. BIOS enable has to be active low, which means the system is allowing the BIOS to be active, not a cartridge. And we have to be looking at the first 8K of memory. So the first 8K of memory, we put that through the three to one multiplexer, which means Y0 will be active low. And then we put the BIOS enable active low into this OR gate. So if either one of these are one, that means it's not going to work because if it's one or one, the OR gate will output a one and these are both active low. So if these aren't both low, the ROM won't work. So this will hopefully output a zero and then if memory request is also low, which means the system's trying to access the bus, we'll get our zero, zero and the ROM will activate. RAM works the same way, though it's a little more complicated. Uh, memory request goes into its chip enable. Then we have RAM enable, which we put into this OR gate. And the other thing going to this OR gate is the Y6 and Y7. They both might be high, but they both will never be low. So they're either gonna be one, one, or one, one, never zero, zero. So we put that through a NOR and that inverts the answer. So in this case, if one of them is high, that gives us a zero. So zero, zero means zero goes here, enabling the RAM. I've been doing some research online. I believe the Sega Master System video chip may have backwards compatibility with the ColecoVision because the Sega Master System has backwards compatibility with the SG-1000, which was Sega's previous game system before this. It's pretty obscure. And it had the same video chip that the ColecoVision does. And according to rumors, you can run those games on a Sega Master System, which means the legacy modes should still be in this chip. So what I wanna do is, um, 
basically isolate the video from the Sega Master System. And I'm removing the video chip and the two RAMs. And the Sega Master System and the ColecoVision also have the same amount of video RAM, 16K. And they've combined the bus, they have the data and the address in the same bus. So these two RAM chips have a lot of, actually most of the pins are the same. The only difference are the data lines. It actually has a 16-bit bus for the, its video RAM. It has eight of the bits on one RAM chip and eight of the bits on the other RAM chip. So when the RAM chips are accessed in parallel, you have 16 total bits across them on the data lines. So what I'm gonna do is um, kind of dead bug these chips. Well, I guess they're not dead bug because it's not upside down, but uh, since most of the pins are the same, I can actually stack them like this <laughs> and uh, save myself a lot of wiring. I'll just bend up whatever pins are unique. I've attached the RAM to the VDP along with the crystal and a few capacitors. So what a lot of those old systems did was they would take a larger crystal value, like 10 megahertz, and divide it down into a smaller value, and that's actually what the system would run at. In this case, it's being divided down to 3.579. Yes. And it sounds like kind of an odd number, but the reason they use that is because that's actually the frequency at which the color changes on an NTSC video signal, or the NTSC color burst frequency. So the ColecoVision and the Master System both use that same frequency as did the SG-1000. Uh, I haven't hooked up the video converter chip here. This takes the RGB signals from the VDP and turns it into composite video. I will eventually move this over here, but I just wanna make sure everything works first. So we know this will work on the Sega Master System, so we'll test that first, and then we'll see if we can get it to boot as a ColecoVision. The main difference in the memory maps between the Master System and the ColecoVision is the location of the RAM. The ColecoVision has it at about C000 hex, whereas the Master System has it at the top 16K of memory. So for the Master System, I'll just look at the top two address lines, A14 and A15, and if those are both high, that means we're trying to get to the last 16K of memory, which is the RAM. I can figure that out with an AND gate and an inverter. And then for the ColecoVision, we'll use a 3D8 converter to um, check to see if we're looking at a specific area of RAM. And if we are, then we access the RAM. Let's hook this up to some power. Turn it on, we'll have to tap reset. Okay, we release reset. And the master system boots up. So cool, let's switch to the ColecoVision. Turn this off. I'll flip this switch to select the lower bank of the 16K ROM. The first 8K of it is the ColecoVision BIOS. And then I just have to switch this one wire here. So I'm going from the AND gate not back to the 3 to 8 encoder. This can be done with another switch or a series of logic, but just for testing purposes, I'll do it here. All right, so now the system should think it's a ColecoVision. Release reset. Hey, it thinks it's a ColecoVision. Nice. I've completed the transplant of the video converter chip over to my custom board. I have all the passive components for the analog, and I also added a few more capacitors to smooth out the power signal. I also put a capacitor and a pull-up resistor on the reset line so that when the system turns on, the reset line will be held low briefly until the capacitor charges, in which case it'll go high, allowing the system to boot. That way, you don't have to tap reset every time you turn the system on. So what I'm gonna do next is add the cartridge slots. And the idea is to actually break this apart, like this, and put it in between. And I have two slots, one for the master system, and one for the ColecoVision. Oh, lucky boxing. 
you fight great, but I'm a great fighter. And uh, I got the pinouts online for both of these cartridge slots. And one thing I noticed was that there are several grounds, and I think we can use that to our advantage. I've marked them in black here. So when a cartridge is plugged in, those grounds will be connected. And what I'm gonna do is use that for digital logic. So if that circuit is completed, you know whether or not the cartridge has been inserted. And we can use that to actually do automatic, well, sort of automatic, selection. Yeah, so we'll put that into a three to eight encoder. So if this circuit's complete, we know the Sega is on. If this circuit's complete, we know the ColecoVision's on. And if neither circuit is complete, then we'll go to the third mystery system. Ah. All right, well, I'm gonna get these wired up and then we'll make it like, like a bus like this. So it'll go vroop. And I left some space here for the additional circuitry. So we have the addressing circuitry over here right now, but I think I'll actually move it to the cartridge slot. The cartridge board fits between the Z80 board and the video board, which means I have to have input headers and output headers for it to bring the buses through the one side and out the other. I'm also attaching memory I.O. controls such as ROM and RAM, so that can be controlled by circuitry on the cartridge connector itself. I'm also going to lay down the power and ground lines before we do all the individual discrete connections. And we also have to be sure that there's no integrated circuits that are gonna to touch the cartridges themselves once they're inserted. I'm going to use discrete logic to detect which cartridge is inserted and then automatically create the memory scheme for that system. We're going to use the cartridge slots to detect what sort of system you're trying to use, either the ColecoVision, the Sega Master System, or a built-in CPM Z80 computer. On the cartridge slot, we are using pins to set B and A either to ground or high, and that will give us our states. So if B is low, we're in ColecoVision. If a is low, we're a master system, and if neither one of them is low, we're a CPM Z80 computer. So here's how that logic is going to work. Let's start with the CPM computer. If they're both high, so if, if this and this, then we get a one here, and that will immediately disable the video game BIOS ROM. Then we take that one and we invert it, so that means if right here, a zero means we're in CPM, one means we're not CPM. So down here we have another OR gate, a15 is an address line, so if we're in the first half of memory, which means A15 will be low, and we're in the CPM system, then we access the 32K ROM, which will have the CPM system. Also, uh, if A15 is high, which means we're in the second half of memory, and if CPM equals one, we have an AND gate that'll send a one over here and give us an enable for the RAM. The RAM is a tricky part because it's accessed by everything. Okay, let's look at the ColecoVision. All right, so, the Coleco RAM is here, that's at uh, 6,000 to 7,000. So if the Coleco RAM is selected by the 3 to 8 encoder here, and the Coleco is low, so basically these are both active low. So if 0, 0, 0, 0, that means we get a 1 here. That gives us another way to enable the RAM. Now for the Master System RAM. The Master System RAM is mapped to the top of memory. Uh, C to D and E to F, basically the top 16K. So if the A14 and A15 lines are high, that means we're trying to access its RAM. Also, if SMS mode and SMS RAM enable are both active, which means they're both zero, then we invert those zeros and we AND them to get another AND. So if all those conditions are met, we AND it again and we get another one over here to engage the RAM as well. All right, now let's look at the BIOS ROM for the game systems. That sits at the beginning of memory, it's 16K. So the first half is Coleco and the second half is Sega Master System. So it's A13 line, we just tie to that connection there. But we still have to know if we need to enable it or not. So basically if we're in the first 8K of memory, this should be active. So if our three to one encoder says that we're in the first 8K of memory and we're not in CPM mode, and if the Sega system hasn't disabled the ROM, then the ROM will activate. So this is how the memory mapping is hopefully going to work. It's kind of like programming, you know, if, then, and, or, but with logic gates. Now comes the unfun part. I have to wire a parallel bus across both of the input output connectors and the cartridge connector. So I'm basically wiring everything four times. I do the trick of using my fingernail to scrape off a little bit of plastic from the wire and then solder it directly to a pad without cutting the wire. 
that makes it a little bit easier to manage. I also have to be sure that I keep a clear space on the board so we can add the integrated circuits for memory decoding later on. As you can see, the wires are a big jumbled mess that get completely tangled up, but to make it a little less insane, I used color coding. Black is for memory addressing, blue is for data, and white is for memory control. I finally finished wiring the rat's nest of the cartridge connector and it passes everything through to the video circuit. Uh, so let's make sure that's still working. It's like a train. It's still working, great. So now what I'm gonna do is wire up the logic gates that I showed you on the whiteboard to decode what mode this should boot into. I hashed out the memory encoding using logic gates on the whiteboard, and then I copied that to 7.4 series logic down here. So we have a total of five OR gates, five AND gates, four NOT gates, and a three to eight encoder. And that will allow the system to organize this RAM and ROM for the three different systems that it can become, which is the Master System, ColecoVision, and then a Z80 computer. So how it will know is if grounds are completed in the cartridge. So if there's no cartridge inserted, there'll be certain lines that are left open, which means, oh, I am not that system. But if the lines are closed, then it's like, oh, I'm a ColecoVision. Let's give an example. So this simulates a Cleco cartridge being in place. All right. I can just hit reset, short out the lines on the master system cartridge. Should boot as a Sega. Nice. The challenge for this project was to find Z80 based systems that were similar enough in architecture to make a combination system. We ultimately chose the ColecoVision and the Sega Master System as our donor candidates. Using a single video display processor, we were able to get the system to boot in either mode based off which game cartridge was installed, using the same ROM, work RAM, and video RAM. I was pretty pleased to find the backwards compatibility in the Sega Master System video, but I regret that we didn't have enough time to add a third system to the mix. We did leave a setting open so that a third system could be added in the future. What would you have done differently for this project? Have you ever combined multiple devices into a single unit before? Let us know in the Element 14 community, where you can also keep track of our upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time. It's not electronics, or it's not a brain, it's electronics, or whatever. <laughs> I'm back. Combining my brain with Felix. Combining it? Combining Are we gonna fill it with wa salt water? <laughs> Femax. I think it's a no given. A no given? A no brainer. <laughs> the Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.